Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about linguistic competence. Competence is, is your efficacy, your potential, your underlying, underlying potential to do something. As opposed to performance, which is actual act of it and which is perceptible and externally observable. Uh, in order to understand linguistic competence, we need to look into the Chomskyan enterprise and the Chomskyan theory of generative grammar from where this term comes out. Uh, a historical reference can be made to Ferdinand de Saussure's expression of La Langue and La Parole. We'll talk about La Lang and La Parole in some other video. Today, we are going to talk about the Chomsky idea of linguistic competence. Why it is so important to understand is that it has a very deep impact on, on linguistic theories and uh, post-behaviorist theory. And roughly, we can say, post-1965, it has an implicit impact, whether it was criticized or it was accepted by scholars, in both ways, it has a deeper impact on understanding language as a phenomenon and all, you know, uh, linguistic theories, it has some or the other reference to it. And that's why this concept is very important to understand. Uh, you know, this was criticized by Delhams, M. K. Halliday, and other people. The pragmatic people in prag working in pragmatics, people working in um, social or social linguistics, and other cognitive scientists. But nonetheless, this concept of linguistic competence remains a very strong and uh, important idea, and uh, we need to understand it in order to understand whether it was. Uh, approved and uh, you know adopted and uh, appreciated by linguists, or it was severely criticized. On both the uh, you know reasons, for both the reasons, we need to understand this concept. So we will start with uh, the quote from Chomsky, where he talks about goal of linguistic theory. Right. Uh, so in in his famous work, Aspects of Theory of Syntax, it published in 1965, on page 3, he mentions, I quote from there, Linguistic theory is concerned primarily with an ideal speaker-listener. We have to keep in mind this phrase, ideal speaker and listener. We will come to that in a while. In a completely homogeneous speech community, who knows its, the speech community's language perfectly, and is unaffected by such grammatically irrelevant conditions as memory limitations, distractions, shifts of attention and interest, and errors, random or characteristics in applying his knowledge to his language in actual performance. And this, this single statement is so powerful in the sense that it, in a way, defines the entire Chomsky approach. Uh, so, Chomsky in essentially distinguishes between competence and performance. So, Chomsky enterprise starts with three etymological questions. What is knowledge of language? How this knowledge of language is acquired? and how this knowledge of language is put into practice. 
with these three questions, entire Chomsky enterprise and the theoretical paradigm starts. If you recall, in 1957, B.F. Skinner came up with a very important and monumental work that summed up entire behaviorist paradigm called verbal behavior. And language was con you know, considered to be part of total human behavior. It's a verbal behavior which is part of total human behavior. And you can recall and connect it with you know, stimulus and response chain, operant conditioning, reinforcement, and habit formation. So language was considered to be an act of habit formation. So behaviorist paradigm, this is how language, this is how they look at the language. And we also recall the Chomsky criticism. Chomsky criticized this work. And that gave foundation for the generative paradigm. And in 1965, by 1965, Chomsky actually articulates the framework of generative paradigm in his wonderful work, as, you know, Aspects of the Theory of Syntax, published in 1965. And I just quoted from page 3 in that, in that work. So he says that linguistic theory is concerned primarily with an ideal speaker and listener, right? in a completely homogeneous speech community. That means Chomsky is, you know, uh, referring to an underlined system of knowledge of language shared by all speakers of that speech community. So at that level, there is no variation. And everyone shares that knowledge of language. And for him, knowledge of language represents the underlying grammatical system. So, he refers to two aspects. One is grammatical competence and the other is pragmatic competence. He you know, refers to pragmatic competence as the, the answer to third question, how this knowledge of language is put into practice, which is referring to performance. But in grammatical competence, he is essentially referring to the computational aspect of language and its representation in human mind. So we have to understand this distinction. This distinction of underlined, so the grammar being underlyingly represented, right, as a mental reality, and the use of language as pragmatic competence or actual performance, right? So he says homogeneous speech community and perhaps these are the terms like, you know, ideal speaker and listener. This was one phrase and the other in this quotation, homogeneous speech community. This word homogeneous is another bone of contention, right? Why he was criticized? Because if you look at the language used, if you look from performance perspective, how actually language is being used in a social context, the, the situation cannot be homogeneous, it's heterogeneous. But he draws a distinction between knowing a language and language use. Knowing a language to him is competence. That means the underlying grammatical representation a mental reality refers to a computational aspect of language which is shared by all the speakers of the language in that particular speech community. And then he, he mentions unless such grammatically irrelevant conditions as memory limitations. So these are exceptions. He is ruling out. So memory limitations right? Uh, distractions, shift of attention and interest and errors. And any kind of error, whether it is a random error or a pattern, if you have a pattern in that error. So, he is keeping the mental representation of language 
and mental representation of grammar out of the ambit of all these restrictions and problems that we may have in performance or while using the language. So he says that a goal of linguistic uh, theory, the goal of linguistic theory is to predict, account for and explain this mental representation and computational aspect of language. Use is user-centric, controlled by, determined by, influenced by multiple factors such as memory limitations, distractions, shift of attention and interest and errors, right? So that's a huge part of language. But as far as mental representation of language is concerned, as far as computational aspect of language is concerned, that is shared by all the speakers of the speech community, right? And that gives you ling uh, no, native intuition about language. So you are able to distinguish between a grammatical and ungrammatical sentence. At the same time, you are able to predict and uh, filter ambiguity in the sentence. So native speaker and native like intuition. So native intuition and speaker. This is what he is referring to. So he makes a fundamental distinction between competence, the speaker's, hearer's knowledge of his language and performance, the actual use of language in concrete situations. And uh, he is more concerned about the first, competence. So bilinguistic competence, he means grammatical competence, which refers to computational aspect of language, how language is computed in human mind. And he sets the goal of linguistic theory to underline, understand, and predict that computation. So Chomsky considers, uh, you know, pragmatic competence or the actual use of it as the, the knowledge of using language as the mental state of knowing a language and grammatical competence as the computational aspect of language that constitutes knowledge of form and meaning. So to him, you know, there is a difference between pragmatic competence and grammatical competence. A pragmatic competence includes both, right? It's a mental state of knowing a language. And when you say, I know a language, what does it mean? That I have control and understanding of the pragmatic aspect and the grammatical aspect of the language as a computational so grammatical competent, competence as computational aspect of language that constitutes knowledge of form and meaning. So this is how he combines it. And he essentially makes the distinction between uh, competence and performance. And he says linguistic competence, understanding linguistic competence should be the goal of linguistic theories. So he takes that understanding of linguistic theories to an abstract level, an underlined level, underlying level, mental representation. And uh, where he clearly makes a distinction between competence and performance. And he says that knowing a language is the mental representation at underlying level, underlying level in the human mind that takes care of the computational aspect of it. And this knowledge is shared by all speakers of the speech community. However, the performance or the actual use of this knowledge may be restricted because of multiple other factors. So he's not talking about uh, structures in terms of, uh, you know, of externally observable perceptible structure that we see in performances. He is referring to competence in a language of a speaker as the mental, deep, deeper mental representation, right? And that refers to 
the computation of it. So, he says that linguistic competence is the system of linguistic knowledge possessed by native speakers of a language, not necessarily, you know, visible in his or her performance, but every native speaker of a language shares the same knowledge base about the language. And it is distinguished from linguistic performance, which is the way a language system is used in communication. So Chomsky introduced this concept in his elaboration of generative grammar and competence is the only level of language that is studied. So he restricts the focus of the entire linguistic theory and study to this aspect of language, the deeper representation, the mental representation. And perhaps this is the reason why Chomsky was severely criticized because he, he is blamed of ignoring the performance and use, uh, you know, language use in the real situation. But the foundation of generative theory, right? Look at look at so many references that he makes to understand this theory. Look at this infinite creativity thing where you have the linguistic elements are limited, the rules of grammars are limited, but you can create unlimited utterances. So do we learn the rules of, of, of a language? Do we acquire rules of a language? We acquire a pattern? So he brings in two important hypotheses to support his, his explanation of generative grammar. And then he says, Universal grammar. He talks about universal grammar. Again, universal grammar is an underlying thing. Underlying thing, right? Uh, a mental representation. He says that human child is born with language acquisition device. But Steven Pinker says uh, we are hardwired to learn a language. So this this is a, a, you know, a, a native native approach where language is native to human. We are born with that mechanism, that apparatus to learn a language that contains LED, language acquisition device, and UG, universal grammar. So he talks about principles and parameters. So he says that linguistic competence is all about understanding the principles of language available to all native speakers of that language. Parameters are the actual use, set. So he refers to that competence as I language, I in italics, I language. So we call it internalized language. So competence is all about internalized language, right? In a, and he, he, that's why he refers to speech community as homogeneous speech community at that level where this knowledge of language is shared without variation. So the speaker of the language understands and can make native speaker the judgments about grammaticality, who can have linguistic intuitions. So these are all abstract underlying factors he is talking about. Right? So this is what Chomsky means by linguistic competence. So Chomsky differentiates competence, which is an idealized capacity from performance, which is production of actual utterances. And according to him, competence is the ideal speaker hearer's knowledge of his or her language, and it is a mental reality which is responsible for all those aspects of language use which can be characterized as linguistic. He argues that only under an idealized situation whereby a speaker hearer is unaffected by grammatically irrelevant conditions such as memory limitations and distractions will performance be a direct reflection of competence. Otherwise, performance is restricted by these memory limitations, distractions, shift of attention. So he says that, you know, performance does not correspond to competence. Performance is a re partial reflection of competence. 
it is not identical. And that is why linguistic theory must distinguish between these two levels of understanding language. So, the capacity or the competence of a speaker cannot be judged absolutely by looking at the performance. So, externally perceptible and observable structures in no way represent the efficacy or the potential or the knowledge of the speaker of the language. So, we need to distinguish between these two levels where one is competence, level of competence and the level of performance. Performance is restricted by a lot of external factors like memory loss, shift in attention, in interest, occupied mind, lots of other factors like fatigue. So your performance is influenced by multiple, restricted by multiple factors. And Chomsky says that these two cannot be uh, no, equated. And if at all you want to judge the knowledge of language, understand the knowledge of language of a speaker, then we have to remove all these grammatically irrelevant factors, which is not possible. So he makes a distinction between the two levels, competence and performance. And a sample of natural speech consisting of numerous false starts and other deviations will not provide such data. And, and if you recall, that's the, perf that's the reason why he talks about stimulus, uh, you know, poverty of stimulus. You can understand poverty of stimulus in these terms in the sense that a young child, a nascent baby or a newly born baby is exposed to variety of data which is idiosyncratic and fuzzy. Right? So, adults who speak around the child and child's input is the performance of these adults. But what makes the child learn the language perfectly fine? Because the input is fuzzy, incomplete, not sufficient, degenerate and limited. But the child is able to acquire the first language without any such restrictions. You can understand this poverty of stimulus idea with, with distinction between competence and performance and the whole idea of native speaker. That child has an inbuilt mechanism and apparatus programmed to learn language and what he calls LED, language acquisition device. Right? And child does not learn rules, but he confirms the labels. That he what, that's what he says. That it confirms the labels. So universal rules, which he call principles of language, are already available with the child. So this is what he, may, he refers to as the mental representation of language and the grammatical computation. This is what he is referring to, right? So he claims that a fundamental distinction has to be made between the competence and performance, right? According to Chomsky, competence is the ideal language system that enables a speaker to produce and understand infinite number of sentences in their language and distinguish grammatical sentences from ungrammatical sentences. So that gives you uh, a capacity to have developed native-like intuition, right? Language intuitions. Not necessarily you have heard all the words and all the sentences of the language you speak, but as a speaker, you have this intuitive underlined, underlying ability to distinguish between grammatical and ungrammatical sentences, what is possible, what is not possible in a language, right? So it is your competence, it is your grammatical competence, it is your, uh, your native-like you know, intuition that allows you to do so. And that is why he delinks competence from performance. 
right? Uh, he said that you know performance is affected by many grammatical, grammatically relevant or irrelevant factors, right? But competence can be studied independently of language use. So you don't have to understand language use to understand language competence. So he completely delinks these two ideas, competence and performance. Performance is individual centric in a given context, restricted by multiple social linguistic and individual grammatically irrelevant factors. So he is not concerned about that. He is more concerned about the mental representation, the computational aspect and underlying grammatical structures what constitute the knowledge of language. Right? So this is what is the Chomsky idea of linguistic competence. It's a very loaded term and we need to understand the profoundity of this explanation in the sense that Chomsky, so what is the deduction that we can make out of it? Or what are the learnings that we can make out of it? Number one, Chomsky dealings, competence and performance. Competence for him is I language, internalized language, which is, which is not perceptible and visible in performance. Performance is the actual use of language, he calls it E language. Right? So we call it e-language, external language that you see and you, know, you witness. He sets the goal of linguistic theory to understand and explain and account for this mental representation of language, the computational aspect of grammar and underlying grammatical structure available to a child as principles of language. Right? He does and and parameters define the performance. He's talking about principles. So principles and parameters. He makes a clear distinction between the two. I language, E language, he makes a very clear distinction between the two. And he says that right, linguistic theory is concerned primarily with an ideal speaker and listener in a completely homogeneous speech community. And this homogeneity refers to that similarity at that underlying level of the representation of language in human mind shared by, and that knowledge is shared by all members of the speech community without any variation, right? So at competence level, all of these users of language are at equal level. They all share the same knowledge of language, about the language. At performance level, we find variations. So he delinks, uh, you know, the level of competence and level of performance. Though he was criticized for this delinking and focusing more on the abstractness of it, because what comp the competence and computation that he is talking about is not externally observable and perceptible and that is suggested and reflected in terms of actual performance. And in that Chomsky enterprise and theory talks about that in, uh, you know, that uh, underlying mental capacity and computational aspect of language. So she was criticized. People like Delhams, people like M.K. Halliday, Right? They secretly criticize this approach in understanding language. However, this idea of linguistic competence had a deep impact in language teaching and learning as well. Right? And uh, as a response to, to this linguistic competence, Dalheims comes up with communicative competence. So what Chomsky talks about as e-language, right, that can be equated with Delheim's idea of communicative competence. In other class, we'll talk about Delheim's communicative competence. M.K. Halliday also underlines seven functions of language, right? 
as, as a response to Chomsky's theory, which was very popular in late 60s and early 70s, you know, uh, Durkheim comes with comes up with speaking model, which is uh, ethnography of communication. So they focus more on the language use in. So they are talking about appropriacy, social cultural appropriacy, pragmatic appropriacy. How a user of the language, you know, uses the language, and they equate these two levels. John uh, Delheim calls it communicative competence, which is seen as uh, a response to Chomsky's linguistic competence. So we'll talk about uh, talk about more on Chomsky's idea of let's say. Uh, generative grammar, you know, or innateness theory. Uh, see in some other video. So for now, this is linguistic competence for you, where we have to remember two, three terms which are very crucial. Number one, ideal speaker and listener in a homogeneous speech community. This is the phrase that we need to remember, and then who knows. In course, knowing right, who knows the speech uh, language perfectly fine, right, and also unaffected by grammatically irrelevant restrictions and conditions. That means he is talking about knowledge of language as possessed by every speaker of the speech community at an underlined an underlying level. As mental representation, as a typical computational system, how these grammar rules are computed, how the user is able to use these rules, right? How these rules are represented in human mind. So he's talking about language as a computational entity in human mind, in an idealized speaker and listener with homogeneous speech community. So these are the terms we need to remember in order to understand Chomsky's idea of linguistic competence, and for him, competence is all about I language, internalized language. Performance is external language, E language. So he makes a distinction between I language and E language. E language is observable, perceptible. You can see from a distance, right? In performance. But performance is controlled, restricted, and influenced by many grammatically irrelevant conditions, like limitations of the human memory, distraction of attention, shifting of attention and interest, errors. It may be random or pattern or characteristics, but they all restrict your performance. And by no means your performance reflect your competence. Right, because performance is restricted by these factors, so that cannot be equated. So your performance is not a good sample to understand the competence. This is what Chomsky says, and we need to understand this distinction of communicate uh, of sorry, uh, you know, linguistic competence and linguistic performance. So there are certain you know pair pair pairing of words you have to remember: linguistic competence, linguistic. Performance one pair, another pair parallel to this is I language E language. You have to remember. Then another pair, principles and parameters that you have to remember. They all refer to similar ideas and concepts. In in pairs, competence performance. In Chomsky Chomsky you know uh, perspective I'm talking about, Chom uh, performance competence and performance E language I language. I language, E language, and principles and parameters. So we'll continue our discussion on uh, Chomsky theory of language, and why, as a social linguistic, you understand you need to understand the reactions and how social linguistics responded to Chomsky generative theory. However, the development of social linguistic owes greatly to Chomsky generative theory. So though people see them. Two separate things, two separate theories, but uh, I believe that you know, in order to develop better understanding of uh, 
communicative competence, it's important for you to understand linguistic competence. So that is it for now and we'll meet in another video with communicative competence. Thank you very much.